Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a couple of cheap capture cards to see if they're any good. Now, capture cards are used for recording video from another PC or another device that's connected to your PC. Their main use is with streamers who are capturing footage from like a console or something like that and streaming off of their PC to include their stream overlay. So when you see someone on Twitch who is streaming uh, an Xbox game, the chances are they're capturing the Xbox footage with a capture card into a PC and then streaming off of the PC. And then another use for them is for someone who's using a high-end camera like an SLR or a, or a cinema camera uh, as a glorified webcam to get really high quality webcam uh, footage as well. That also requires a capture card because that camera will be outputting HDMI. So you need to capture that onto the computer in order to then display it. There's two main variables for this. You've got USB ones like these ones that I'm looking at today. And then you also get PCI Express ones that are an adding card that you slot into the computer. And a good capture card will generally cost somewhere between $100 and $200. Now that price tag makes them one of the more expensive parts of a streamer setup. So when a couple of people told me that they had some cheap capture cards from AliExpress that cost $10, I thought, hmm, I'll believe that when I see it. So I went and bought a couple. Um, I've got this stick style one, which is just a USB 2 connection with a single HDMI input, and that cost $10 from AliExpress. And then I've also got this pass-through one, which has dual HDMI connectors on, an input and an output. So you've got an input from your source and an output back to a monitor that you watch through. Um, now, this one was $35, so it was quite a bit more expensive. It's still very cheap in terms of capture cards, but obviously, you know, it's more than three times the price of the other one. But it does also have audio in and out on it as well, which is also useful. So it's got all the same, it's got all the same connections that I would expect to see on a proper uh, a flagship USB um, capture card. I did look for a cheap PCI Express card, but the only one I could find was about $60. And while that's still about like half the cost of a decent branded device, I'm not willing to roll the device on that one. I think if you're willing to spend $60, then you may as well either buy a secondhand branded one or you may as well save up a little bit more money and just buy a proper branded one that will definitely be good. Uh, however, if anyone has got one of those super cheap ones, then I'm interested to know how you get on with it and if it is any good or not. Now, both devices I've got here claim to be 4K 60 Hz capture. However, be aware that that means pass-through support. And when you actually read into the small print, the it will accept a 4K 60 Hz signal. However, the and it will pass that through to your um, preview monitor, but the recording will be limited to 1080p 60 frames a second. However, that's absolutely fine if you're because trying to stream at 4K just isn't worthwhile for all kinds of reasons. So 1080p 60fps is all most people care about. So I'm going to be reviewing these two devices against my Ava Media Live Gamer HD2, a PCI Express card that I spent about $120 on. And while it's not as quite as polished as an Elgato is, the performance is everything that you need for HD streaming. I like this card a lot and I get on with it very well. So to do the test, I hooked up a Nintendo Switch and laid down a terrible time on Mario Kart. The game is running at 1080p 60fps, so that's the baseline of what we want to capture. Let's go through the cards one by one and see how they did. So because the stick has no pass through on it, I had to play by watching the preview on OBS where I was recording. Now this is generally a no-no because you'll have about 10,000 days of input lag. But much to my surprise, it was actually quite playable. Near enough the same as my Ava Media for input lag. You couldn't play a Twitch game on it like Smash Bros or a shooter, but games where input speed isn't super important are quite passable. Um, you know, I mean, Mario Kart requires a certain degree of low input lag to react in corners, and I was able to play reasonably well. However, that lack of input lag has come at a heavy cost of image compression, which is possibly down to the USB 2 interface as well. We're also stuck at 30 frames a second, which is definitely not 1080p 60, and obviously hopelessly out of range of being able to do any kind of 4K capture. 
The pass-through box also started out well with the same low input lag, and it did attempt 60 frames a second, but it leaks frames like a bath without a plug, and you can see the visually choppy frame rate. I did try capping it to 30 frames a second to see if that would do anything, but that also didn't solve it. We still had the horrible judders and the same heavy in image compression, despite this apparently being a USB 3 device that shouldn't require that kind of image compression. The pass-through picture to the monitor was crystal clear, but that's not a lot of use if your audience is getting a really trash video feed. I didn't even bother testing it at 1440p or 4K because the people who own expensive monitors and consoles should just buy a good capture card. The lack of 1080p performance here basically makes high-end pass-through irrelevant. And now for the sake of comparison, here's my Ava Media. Obviously a top brand PCI Express card is going to decimate cheap alternatives, that goes without saying. But the point of this compression is to show you what the best ones actually look like, so we can notice the shortcomings of the cheap cards. Be aware that you are watching it on YouTube compression as well, and YouTube mangles videos. So the actual real life footage does look better than this. The Ava Media has no image compression at all. Now, bear in mind you're watching on YouTube where everything is compressed, so you are seeing a worse version of this, but the source footage looked drastically better than what the cheap capture cards were doing. And of course, it's holding a silky 60 frames a second with basically no problems whatsoever. It's also worth noting that the audio is noticeably better as well because that is not compressed. So at 1080p, the stick is really good bang for buck. 30 frames a second is acceptable for streaming less action-oriented games. Uh, a lot of people probably won't notice. Um, the compression is terrible. It's not too bad on moving stuff, but it's really noticeable on uh, menu items and game UI items. But it's hard to argue with that uh, $10 price tag. It's a no-brainer if you need just something that works. The pass-through model, however, is completely unusable for gaming due to that choppy frame rate. Um, while it would be passable for desktop capture, you may as well buy the stick for that because input lag doesn't matter on the desktop, so you don't need pass-through anyway. At 720p, both the devices did manage to attain a stable 60 frames a second. You do take a hint in the visual fidelity, but the compression is buried in the lower resolution and the smoother frame rate is easier on the eye. If you need 60 frames a second, 720p is passable in a stream. Most viewers are going to be watching in a window or on a mobile device anyway, so it might be a worthwhile trade-off for you if you're starting out. So what are my recommendations for this? Well, the stick is astonishing bang for buck and probably a handy thing to have in your widget collection anyway, just for desktop capture and stuff like that. The lack of any pass-through on it means you'll need to deal with that split second of input lag, which may or may not be an issue for you depending on what you're doing. Um, however, the compression does make it worthless for use with a digital SLR or a cinema camera, because any quality that you're getting from that camera immediately gets mangled by the compression. Uh, I guess you could still get some value from using a camera that's got a big lens on it. However, a good webcam with good lighting will also yield a decent picture. So this doesn't really make sense unless you already have the big camera lying around. But then if you can afford a big camera, you can probably afford a decent capture card anyway as well. Um, so make of that what you will. Uh, the pass-through card, this is difficult to recommend for anything at all. Um, $35 is, uh, is, you know, it's still very cheap, but it doesn't have that magic $10 price tag on it. And it's basically useless at 1080p unless you're doing desktop capture, in which case you don't need pass-through and you just buy the stick anyway. So the only thing that this thing really makes sense for is 720p 60 frames a second gaming, where pass-through is critical because you're playing a fast reaction game like a fighter or shooter, and you need a zero input lag preview from the pass-through connection. Um, and But at this price point, you're probably better off just saving up a little bit more money and buying either a second-hand premium card, which will still cost more, but still be cheaper than a brand new premium card. Um, 
So, yeah, as I say, I, I didn't like this one. I wanted it to work. However, the choppy frame rate at 1080p just kills it flat. If it could do a stable 1080p 30fps, then this might have been salvageable. However, for what we've got, it's just no bueno. And of course, if you already own a decent capture card like an Ava Media or an Elgato, well, you are validated. They are definitely worth the extra money, as can clearly be seen in the comparison. So now finally, just for funsies, uh, I'm going to quickly do a teardown on these because there's a couple of things that I'm interested in seeing. We're not going to find out what chipsets are in these because I will bet money that the uh, all of the markings on all of the chips in these have been laser etched off because that's what the Chinese do. Um, however, I'm curious to know if it looks like they have the same chipset and I'm also curious to know as to whether this thing really is USB 3 or not. Based on its performance, it seems to get absolutely no benefit whatsoever from being USB 3 because it's still heavily compressed. The point of making it USB 3 would be that you didn't need to compress the image uh, because you've got more bandwidth. Um, so I, I have a sneaky suspicion that when we open this up, we're going to find that the USB 3 connections in it actually aren't connected. So let's find out. Let's start off with the little one. Oh my god, that is the most adorable heatsink I've ever seen. That's amazing. Well, we're definitely not going to see what chipset is there without removing that. And I don't really want to break this one because I didn't order two of them. And I actually want to keep this because I think it's a really nifty little widget. That is astonishingly simple inside. What have we got here? We've got a power system. So that is probably power management there. I'm not going to bother reading chip numbers, but that's probably what it is. Um, uh, we've got the clock and then literally everything else is just that chipset. That's the whole thing. We've got USB 2 lines to it, HDMI to there. That's it. That's all it does. Wonderfully simple. No drivers required. This is cool. I like it. As I say, it's not the highest quality capture you're ever going to see. But for $10, who cares? You know. Right. So we do have a considerable amount more going on inside this guy. And... I called it. I called it. Take a look at the USB 3 port. So as you can see, there's two distinctive data lines coming off from the USB 2 connections there and there. However, I don't see anything else connected at all. Like you can't see there's no additional there's no additional USB 3 traces that are going down there. And this is where they would be routing them. Why would you route them anywhere else but down there? So yeah, USB 3 connector, but it ain't a USB 3 device. This is USB 2. It's just the USB 2 data lines connected. All this other stuff, that's literally just pinning. Um, power and just identification and stuff like that. Um, you know, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty certain that's all we're seeing here. Uh, we've got audio down here. That's probably an audio chip. Um, that is handling the capture because we have to be able to capture and then uh, repeat the audio signal in or out. And then we've got a couple of chipsets here. So are those chipsets the same? That one looks a, a considerably bigger. Yeah, definitely a different chipset if we put those together. They're completely different sizes. So it is a different chipset um, and it looks like it's paralleled up to this one here. So yeah, this one works very differently. Most likely this is a HDMI MUX chip uh, or like a HDMI splitter or something like that um, that handles the pass through and then that is passing a, U a HDMI signal back to this chip which then actually does all the capture. So those would be my guesses. And then again, we've got a fair amount of extra power supply up here. We've got uh, a 1v2, a 3v3, another 3v3 and another 1v2. So uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of power going on up there. Uh, which surprises me, but I'm not an electronics engineer, so make of that what you will. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, I got what I wanted to see from that. Um, they're not terribly exciting inside. As with any super cheap uh, price-optimized product, um, there's as little as possible inside these things. However, again, not USB 3. Called it. 
So that about wraps it up from me for this video. I hope you guys found this kind of interesting. Um, you know, reviewing devices like this is something that I've always had a passing interest in. I love buying cheap hardware to find out if it's actually any good or not. Because while obviously a lot of the time you buy something that's really cheap, surprise, surprise, it's not going to be very good. But now and then there's a little diamond in the rough that either is actually pretty good because it's literally just the unbranded version of your favorite branded device. Uh, or failing that, you'll find something that isn't very good but is so cheap that it doesn't really matter that it's not very good. As was the case with our little $10 friend here. As I say, the image compression makes it difficult to recommend for any kind of professional use. However, incredibly handy to have in your toolkit just as something for capturing a raw feed from a camera or another computer when you don't have anything else available to you. Uh, because you could plug this into a laptop and capture your desktop stream from it or something like that. It's almost a really small monitor to all intent and purpose. Um, if you are interested in seeing the, the full length of the triple side-by-side -side comparison, I'll include a link down below to the full uh, two-minute uh, replay of the Mario Kart test on it, so you can have a look at the whole thing. As I say, do keep in mind that the YouTube compression did somewhat dilute the effectiveness of that comparison. It's very flattering to the lesser devices. However, uh, yeah, if you want to have a look at that and decide for yourself whether you think that these are useful or not, then yeah, check it out. Otherwise, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. And also, if there's any other devices that you think are cool that you want me to take a look at like this, then leave a comment down below and give me some ideas. Because as I say, I love buying cheap stuff and going, is this actually any good? Especially when it's something that I use myself and I have a good example to compare it against. Um, links for my support stuff, so my Twitter, my Patreon and my Discord are down in uh, the description below as well, or hang around for the end card. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.